In this video, I will give an overview of two papers. The first is called Diagrammatic Sets and Free Writing Weak High Categories. The second is called the Smash Product from Model Theories. You can find both in the archive. At 94 and 74 pages respectively, they are quite long, so I won't go into much detail. Combinatorial models of spaces, aka homotopy types, or direct spaces such as high categories, are often based on the idea of a shape category. The objects of a shape category are the shapes that the cells of the space may have, and morphisms are ways in which a shape can map to another shape. A space is then a pre-sheaf on the shape category, satisfying some properties. Examples of shapes include globes, synthesis, cubes, and optopes, giving rise to globular, simplicial, cubical, and orbitalic sets. In 1991, Mikhail Kapranov and Vladimir Vajvatsky, from now on KV, consider a very rich shape category, containing globes, synthesis, cubes, and many other shapes. Free shifts in this category were called diagrammatic sets. KV's goal was to prove the homotopy hypothesis for a model of high groupoids based on strict high categories. Let's call these strict high groupoids. For a given definition of high groupoids, the homotopy hypothesis states roughly that all classical homotopy types are faithfully modeled by high groupoids in such a way that the tower of n truncations of the high groupoid in which we identify homotopical n cells models the Posnikov tower of a homotopy type. KV's strategy was to prove that strict high groupoids are equivalent to certain fibrant diagrammatic sets, and then prove the homotopy hypothesis for fibrant diagrammatic sets. In 1998, Carlos Simpson showed that the overall claim in KV was unfixably wrong. Those details in KV were scarce, but it has remained unclear where exactly the proof went wrong. One outcome of my work is that it salvages in part this half of the proof, so long as you switch to an improved version of diagrammatic sets. And at last, it pinpoints a critical mistake in this half. You may ask, why bother? You already have nice models based on synthesis and cubes. Well, there are some emerging use cases for high categories coming from computer science or applied category theory with a somewhat different flavor. For one, they focus on specific presentations of high categories by generators and relations. You could say they focus on spaces with the structure of a cell complex. In this context, it is essential to have a rich enough shape category because different presentations with different cell shapes will have different computational properties. They also focus on explicit diagrammatic reasoning, or diagram rewriting. In a string diagram picture, it goes like this. You have a generating rewrite, you match its source to a sub-diagram of a given diagram, and you replace it with its target. In the cell complex picture, this is a kind of cell surgery. You match the source of an n plus 1 cell to an n cell, and glue it onto it. This defines a homotopy, modeling the rewrite of one cell into another. So there is this strong analogy between rewriting and homotopy, and we like to have a formalism for rewriting that is both expressive and sound for homotopical algebra. Some formalisms for diagram rewriting focus on special cases, like rewriting on symmetric monoidal categories. For the general problem of rewriting in high categories, we have two formalisms, polygraphs, based on strict high categories, and the associative model of n categories, used by the homotopy I.O. proof assistant. Due to Simpson's result, Polygraphs are not sound for homotopical algebra, and for associative n categories, as far as I know, it is still an open question. Returning to the broken half of KV's proof, these two sides are not equivalent. The idea is that polygraphs live in the same world as these, but they really want to be living in the same world as these. So, in a nutshell, the idea was to redevelop diagrammatic sets as an equally expressive but homotopically sound alternative to polygraphs. Now, KV's shape category was based on Michael Johnson's composable pasting schemes. Simon Avi has observed that with this choice, shapes are not closed under a number of natural operations, which leads to unnecessary complications. I replaced Johnson's pasting schemes with Richard Steiner's directed complexes, a more flexible formula. In both of these, the idea is to encode a cell shape by its oriented face poset. In a face poset, we only remember if a cell is in the boundary of another cell. In an oriented face poset, we also mark cells in co-dimension 1 as belonging to either the source or the target boundary of the cells that cover them. Steiner defined combinatorial conditions ensuring that an oriented poset is the oriented face poset of a composable and categorical diagram. He called these oriented posets molecules. A molecule with the greatest element is an atom. 
I focused on a particularly well-behaved class of atoms, the regular ones. They have the property that, if you forget orientation, they are face poses of regular CW balls. So, regular atoms are the objects of my shape category that I denote with this hydrogen atom symbol. The morphisms are maps that are compatible with source and target boundaries, and the diagrammatic set is a pre-sheaf from the atom category. The atom category contains many others as full subcategories. The reflexive globe category, the simplex category, the category of cubes with connections, and the category of positive optopes with contractions. Importantly, maps of atoms are order preserving, so we get a forgetful functor to the category of both sets. We can compose these with a the simplicial nerve functor, then do a left Kahn extension. This gives us one adjunction between diagrammatic sets and simplicial sets. Restriction to the simplex category together with its left adjoint gives another adjunction. The composite of these two adjunctions, up to natural isomorphism, is the barycentric subdivision X functor adjunction on simplicial sets. I use this triangle of adjunctions together with some very explicit combinatorics to connect the diagrammatic and simplicial homotopy theory and prove a version of the homotopy hypothesis for diagrammatic sets. I also define a model of high categories in the co-inductive infinity-infinity sense based on diagrammatic sets. This is similar to the completion or opitopic models, in that weak composites are exhibited by higher dimensional equivalence cells. Unlike these models, though, it has the advantage that the equivalence cells are defined by pseudo-invertibility, as in this paper by Eugenia Chen. This is an algebraic notion, and that simplifies many things. For example, it makes it easy to define the localization of a higher category at a set of cells. Now, another nice thing about atoms is that they are closed under many operations which we can extend to diagrammatic sets. Like lobes, they are closed under suspension. Like simplices, they are closed under join. Like cubes, they are closed under gray products. The gray product is a kind of oriented, non-symmetric version of a Cartesian product. And in the same way as we define the smash product of pointed spaces using the Cartesian product, we can define the smash product of pointed diagrammatic sets using the gray product. In my second paper, I show that this gray smash product has a surprising connection with the construction of props in categorical universal algebra. The colored prop is one of the gadgets we use to describe generalized algebraic theories. It generalizes both lower Weyer theories and symmetric operands. And there is a tensor product operation of props that generalizes both the tensor product of Lovia theories and a boardman bock product of symmetric operands. Now, there are planar and braided non-symmetric version of props. They are called pros and props, respectively. The tensor product does not restrict to either. But there is a kind of external product of pros producing a prop. It is compatible with the tensor product of props, in the sense that the tensor product of two props that are free on pros is the free prop on their external product. Now, if you are familiar with the periodic table of n categories, a pro, as a singly monoidal theory, corresponds to a bi category with one zero cell, but a prop, as a doubly monoidal theory, corresponds to a tri category with a single zero cell. Using this idea, we can define embeddings of pros and props into pointed diagrammatic sets. What I proved is that the external product of pros arises as a low-dimensional truncation of the smash product of their embeddings. More in general, the idea is that the smash product of an n monoidal theory with a k monoidal theory produces an n plus k monoidal theory. This eventually stabilizes to symmetric monoidal, and we could in principle recover the tensor product of props directly. But that would require identifying props with an explicit model of seven-dimensional categories, and it's not something I want to do. To me, the most interesting thing is that because all sets in the diagrammatic sets are oriented, we can take the smash product not just of theories, but of presentations of theories with oriented equations. And that produces another presentation with oriented equations. Furthermore, it produces some higher dimensional data, which gets destroyed if we truncate to the presented theory. If you're into homotopical algebra, this data is what you would call oriented syzygies. If you're into rewriting, it is data that exhibits the confluence of some new critical branchings in the presentation. So the smash product produces additional data compared to the tensor product, which is both homotopically and computationally interesting. And it seems plausible to me that if we start from nice coherent presentations of two theories, we may systematically obtain nice coherent presentations of the tensor product. And that is something that I want to explore. That's all that I'll say today. Thank you for listening. And if you're interested, please check out the papers.